Are there further amendments to this title? Mr. Chairman. Who is seeking recognition? Mr. Pitt. Mr. Pitt. I have an amendment at the desk. It's uh, Amendment 045. Mr. Chairman, reserving a point of, point of order. Gentleman later from Colorado reserves a point of order. The clerk will report the amendment, and we'd ask that the amendment be distributed. Amendment offered by Mr. Pitts. In Title V, add at the end of the Section 19, 1920C of the Social Security Act, added by Section 5004B, the following. D, parental notification requirement. One, in general, subject to Paragraph 2, in each case that a, a qualified... Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I'm going to recognize the gentleman for two minutes to talk about his amendment. Mr. Pitt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I really don't understand what the expansion of uh, family planning services has to do with stimulating the economy. But my amendment has to do with parental notification in this section to mi for minors. Subsection EE -E establishes criteria for individuals who are eligible to be beneficiaries of the new state option established in Section 5004. The criteria includes a new loophole to permit surreptitious enrollment of minors of virtually any family income level in this program without the knowledge of the parents or consent of the parents. Instead of ha helping loving parents protect, nurture, or raise their children, this bill, as currently drafted, would keep parents in the dark. It is unconscionable that clinics leave parents in the dark while their children receive medication that may be detrimental to their health or even deadly. Parents know their children's medical history. Parents are best able to make medical decisions for their minor daughters, and parents should be informed when their child is given prescription medic medicine. Uh, I'll just cite one example, the story of Melissa, a teenage girl who had a terrible reaction to a contraceptive drug after she received it without her parents' knowledge. And when they found her vomiting and screaming for help, her parents had no idea that she, she could be reacting from this drug. She was rushed to the emergency room where she was treated for reaction to uh, this, this uh, drug. There's a reason why school nurses have to get permission before administering Tylenol to kids and why parents have to consent for piercings and tattoos. Parents know their kids best and they're best equipped to help them make good decisions. And when parents are knowledgeable about their children's health care, they can protect their daughters from sexual abuse and predators. Nearly all children and teenagers will qualify for this program under the current language. As this bill expands family planning coverage to minors, the least we can do is make sure their parents are notified. My amendment would ensure that parents are informed and able to be a part of their child's medical decisions. And I urge my colleagues would, to support Would the gentleman them. yield? Yes. Just, I'll be good. I know the time's expired. I have a statement I'd like to put in the record, and, and I rise in strong support of the gentleman's amendment. It's one of the more important amendments we're considering this evening. The uh, time has expired. The statement that the gentleman from Texas wishes to insert in the record will be uh, 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 permitted without objection. Mr. Chairman. Now, it, uh, Ms. DeGette, do you wish to be recognized? In Chairman, I, I um, uh, withdraw my reservation and I seek time in opposition to the amendment. Uh, we only have uh, two minutes, so I, and I know uh, Ms. Capps wishes to speak on it as well, so I hope in the course of managing the two minutes in opposition you would yield to her. Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. The lady is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, I, I just point out a couple of things. Number one, there's no current requirement under Medicaid for parental notification for contraception. Number two, this is contraception not abortion. And I will remind my colleagues on both sides of the aisle once again, if we want to prevent abortion, we should have contraception. While most adolescents will consult with their families about contraception, unfortunately, this does not always happen. And I will finally point out, Mr. Chairman, that while a number of states require parental noti notification in some circumstances for contraception, there is not one state in this country, and again, 
uh, not under Medicaid, do states require parental notification for all adolescents to receive contraception? This is just incredibly broad, and it will be detrimental to the health of the young women of America. With that, I will yield to Ms. Capps. I thank my colleague for yielding. Mr. Chairman, I believe it's essential to retain the underlying language which establishes a state option for covering family planning planning services. My state of California has received this waiver for a long time and has tremendously positive results for the patients who benefit. Every year, California's family planning program serves a million and a half clients and stay, saves the state $2 billion. In answer to Mr. Pitt's question, how does this save the economy? Uh, for every dollar spent on this program, California saves $2.76 in medical and social services costs within two years. In 2007, CBO estimated savings of $200 million over five years and $400 million over 10 years for a state option to cover Medicaid family planning services for all women who would be eligible for pregnancy-related care. It not only saves money, it's a good health care practice. So I urge my colleagues to support retaining the language to oppose this amendment and to make coverage of family planning services a state option. And I return my, any unused time to my colleague. Chairman, yield back. All time has expired on the amendment. All those in favor of the Pitts Amendment will say aye. aye. Mr. Aye. Chairman, I'd like a roll call vote. You want a roll call vote. Let's go right to a roll call. Mr. Waxman. No. Mr. Waxman, no. Mr. Dingle. No. Mr. Dingle, no. Mr. Markey. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Pallone. Mr. Pallone, no. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Rush. Mr. Rush, no. Ms. Eshoo. Ms. Eshoo votes no. Mr. Stupak. Mr. Stupak, aye. Mr. Engel. Mr. Engel, no. Mr. Green? No. Mr. Green, no. Ms. DeGette? No. Ms. DeGette, no. Mrs. Capps? Mrs. Capps, no. Mr. Doyle? Ms. Harmon? Ms. Harmon, no. Ms. Schakowsky? No. Ms. Schakowsky, no. Mr. Gonzalez? Mr. Gonzalez, no. Mr. Inslee? No. Mr. Inslee, no. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Baldwin, no. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Ross votes aye. Mr. Weiner? No. Mr. Weiner votes no. Ms. Mr. Matheson? Mr. Butterfield? No. Mr. Butterfield, no. Mr. Melanson? Mr. Barrow? Mr. Barrow votes no. Mr. Hill? Mr. Hill, no. Ms. Matsui? Ms. Matsui, no. Mrs. Christensen? Mrs. Christensen, no. Ms. Castor? Ms. Castor, no. Mr. Sarbanes? No. Mr. Sarbanes, no. Mr. Murphy of Connecticut? No. Mr. Murphy of Connecticut, no. Mr. Space? No. Mr. Space, no. Mr. McNerney? No. Mr. McNerney, no. Ms. Sutton? Ms. Sutton, no. Mr. Braley? Mr. Braley, no. Mr. Welch? Mr. Barton? Mr. Barton? <laughs> Mr. Barton votes aye. Mr. Hall? Mr. Hall, aye. Mr. Upton? Mr. Stearns? Mr. Deal, Mr. Deal, aye. Mr. Whitfield, Mr. Shimkus, Mr. Shattuck, Mr. Shattuck, aye. Mr. Blunt, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Blunt votes aye. Mr. Boyer, Mr. Radonovich. Mr. Pitts, Mr. Pitts votes aye. Ms. Bono Mack, Mr. Walden, Ms. Walden aye. Mr. Terry, Mr. Rogers, 
Mr. Rogers votes aye. Mrs. Myrick. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Murphy of Pennsylvania votes aye. Mr. Murphy votes aye. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess votes aye. Ms. Blackburn. Mr. Gingry. Mr. Gingry votes aye. Mr. Scalise. Mr. Mr. Markey. Mr. Markey votes no. Any other members wish to respond to the roll? Mr. Melanson. Mr. Melanson votes aye. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes votes no. There are no other members who wish to respond to the vote. The clerk will tally, make, will tally the vote. That's right. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, the ayes were 14 and the nays were 29. 14 ayes, 29 noes. The uh, amendment is not agreed to.